Good morning Year 6, um, I can't quite believe that this is Term 5, Week 5 already, time just seems to be flying by. Now if you're watching this video, I assume that means you have selected Maths Challenges Set 1. Um, this is revision of previously learnt skills, so have a go. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask me on the Padlet or email the school email address. Okay. Now then, simplifying fractions, let's go. So, what does this even mean to start with? So, simplifying fractions means giving the fraction in its simplest form. So you find an equivalent fraction that is as simple as possible, so using the lowest possible numbers. So an equivalent fraction is a fraction that has the same value, but you are trying to make the numerator and the denominator as low as possible using the same, it'll be the same value, but smaller numbers. Okay, so I'm going to give you three top tips of how to simplify fractions. Here we go. Tip number one, use a fractions wall. Now, uh, fractions walls aren't always available, but if you have one, brilliant, you can use it. So we've got two fractions here that we're going to have a go at, four six and six eighths. So let's start with four sixths. Now I'm going to draw a rectangular box around, let's get yellow, around four sixths. So here we go, here's my line of sixths. Here we go. Oh it doesn't want to play today, there we go. Okay so one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, there we go. Four six. There we go. Got there in the end. One, two, three, four, six. So we're going to use this fractions wall. Now, to find an equivalent fraction, it's got to be the same value. That means that the fractions must fit into this rectangle. So here's my four six. If I move it along the fractions wall doesn't fit exactly into any of the fifths, doesn't fit exactly into any of the quarters, but there we go, it does fit exactly into the thirds, and there are one, two thirds, so therefore four sixths is equivalent to two thirds. If we try and move that along the fractions wall anymore, doesn't fit exactly into any of the halves, and of course not the whole. Okay. Now then, six eighths. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to draw a rectangle around my six eighths. Let's use yellow again so it stands out. Here are the eighths. One eighth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight eighths makes a whole. We know that. One, two, three eighths, four, five, six eighths. There we go. And we can move this up the fractions wall to see which other fractions fit exactly into the six eighths. So none of the sevenths fit in, nor the eight, uh, the sixths, sorry. Fifths, ah, here we go. Look, I shouldn't have used yellow, but you can see that one, two, three quarters fits exactly into the six eighths. Therefore, six eighths is equivalent to one, two, three quarters. Three quarters. And if I continue to move this rectangle along, the thirds don't fit in exactly, the halves don't fit in exactly, and of course doesn't fit into a whole. Okay, so unfortunately, a fractions wall won't always be made available to you. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can use division. And the first tip is using division by dividing by the numerator. So I've got three fractions here that we're going to have a go at. And we are going to simplify, <coughs> excuse me, 6 eighteenths. So I'm going to write that over here. 6 eighteenths. Okay. And so we're going to divide by the numerator, that's the number on the top. So here we're going to divide by 6. If we do something to the 
the numerator, we have to do it to the denominator as well. I apologise about the watermark. I just don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> so let's divide 6 and 18 by 6. How many 6s are in 6? 1. 18 divided by 6. How many 6s are in 18? 6, 12, 18. There are 3. There we go. A third. Therefore, in its simplest form, six eighteenths becomes one third because you divide the numerator and the denominator by the numerator. OK, let's have a go at three ninths. So if I rub this out really quickly, let's have a go. OK, then we've got three ninths now. We're going to, again, divide the numerator and the denominator by the numerator. OK, the numerator is 3, so we're going to divide both of these numbers by 3. If we do it to the numerator, we've got to do it to the denominator. We know that. OK, so 3 divided by 3. So how many 3s are in 3? That is 1. 9 divided by 3. How many 3s are in 9? 3, 6, 9. So 3. OK, so we've got a third. Oh, look, another third there. So therefore, 3 ninths in its simplest form is 1 third. And last but not least, let's have a go at 4 twelfths. Let's really quickly rub this out. OK. Four twelfths. So here we go. Our four is our numerator. Twelve is our denominator. We're going to divide both of them by the numerator, which is four. So let's do four divided by four. And we're going to do twelve divided by four. OK. Four divided by four. How many fours are in four? One. 12 divided by 4, how many 4s are in 12? 4, 8, 12. There are 3. Oh, look, another third. Therefore, 4 twelfths in its simplest form is 1 third. So that actually means that 6 eighteenths, 3 ninths, and 4 twelfths are actually, um, they're all equivalent. They all represent the same amount. So if I said, oh, can you pass me six eighteenths of that chocolate bar? And then I changed my mind and said, oh, no, 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 I'll have three ninths. Actually, the same amount. They are equivalent. Now, unfortunately, it's not always that easy. And you can't always divide the numerator and the denominator by the numerator. So I'm going to show you what to do. So top tip number three is divide by the highest common factor. And the highest common factor is the highest or the greatest number that goes exactly into the numerator and the denominator. And I'll show you what that means now to become a little bit clearer. So the first one we're going to have a go at simplifying is 12 eighths. OK, I'm going to uh, 12 eighteenths, sorry. Here's my 12 eighteenths. And the first thing I'm going to do is write down the factors of 12 and 18. And I'm looking for the highest common factor. That means the greatest, the biggest number that goes into can be divided by 12 and 18. Or sorry, that 12 and 18 can be divided by and give a whole number. So you'll see what I mean now. So 12, I can divide that by 1. I could divide 12 by 2 and get a whole number. I can divide 12 by 3 and get a whole number. I can divide 12 by 4 and get a whole number. Uh, I can't divide 12 by 5. Um, I can divide 12 by 6 and get a whole number. Uh, I can't divide 12 by 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 or 11. I could divide it by 12. OK. 18. Um, I can divide that by 1 and get a whole number. 
I can divide it by two and get a whole number. I could divide it by three. I can't divide it by four. 18 is not in the four times table. Um, I cannot divide it by five. That's not in the, um, 18 is not in the five times table. Six, I could divide it by six. That is in, 18 is in the six times table. Can't divide it by seven, can't divide it by eight, or could divide it by nine. Right, okay, look. The highest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. So I'm going to divide 12 and 18 by six. Divide by six, just to make it really clear, divide by six. Six is the highest common factor. 12 divided by six, how many sixes are in 12? Two. 18 divided by six, how many sixes are in 18? Six, 12, 18, there are three. Therefore, 12 eighteenths in its simplest form is two thirds. Okay, let's have a go at one more. Okay, here we go. So my fraction that I would like to simplify is six ninths. Now I cannot divide both of those numbers by the numerator. I can do six divided by six, but I can't do nine divided by six. So I need to divide by the highest common factor. So that is the highest number, the greatest number that will go into six and nine exactly. Okay, so let's find out the numbers that will go into six. Okay, so I can, yeah, I can do six divided by one and get a whole number. I can do six divided by two and get a whole number. I can do six divided by three and get a whole number. I can't do six divided by four or six divided by five. I can do six divided by six. Okay, so nine. I can do nine divided by one. I can't do nine divided by two because it's odd. I can do nine divided by three. Can't do nine divided by four or five or six. They don't give me a whole number. Next one's gonna be nine. So you can see here, the highest common factor of six and nine was three. So I'm gonna divide both of them by three. Oh, that's a, it's a three, I promise, it's a dodgy one. Divide it by three. Okay, six divided by three. How many threes are in six? Three, six, there are two. How many threes are in nine? Three, six, nine, there are three. So two thirds, oh, look at that. Another two thirds. So therefore, 12 eighteenths and six ninths, uh, they're equivalent because simplified, they both come out as two thirds. Now, I'm going to give you um, a couple of seconds. Um, you can pause the video and I would like you to use the method that I have just shown you, divided by the highest common factor. Can you find the simplest form of eight twelfths? So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and then I'll share the answer with you. OK, pause now. OK, in its simplest form, 8 twelfths, the highest common factor mm -hmm. of 8 and 12 was 4. So how many 4s were in 8? There were 2. How many 4s were in 12? There were 3. So in its simplest form, 8 twelfths becomes 2 thirds. And look at that. They all simplify to 2 thirds. I hope that helped you with your learning. Like I said earlier, if you've got any questions, just ask on the Padlets and I'm happy to help.